How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Zach and Apple has just released its latest update to iOS 16, iOS 16.4 as you can see right here and guys, trust me, this is the biggest update to iOS 16 so far and in my opinion, we won't see anything larger than this. Guys, this is absolutely insane. We've got over 15 new features and changes. And I'm not talking about here about bug fixes, security updates, no, no, no. I'm talking about new stuff. So let's get started. Let's see everything that's new in iOS 16, as well as the bug fixes, security updates. And of course, let's talk about performance and battery as well. So let's get started. All right, I wanna start off with new emoji. So as you can see right here, we have quite a lot of new emoji. We have new hands, a shaking head, a donkey. Uh, we have some new hearts, a goose, bird, a comb. Uh, it's quite a lot, actually. I really like those new emoji. I see myself using like three or four of those on a daily basis. So I really like them. And this is the first new thing. Uh, of course, it's not just that. One of the big new features of iOS 16.4 is the fact that now we can have Safari web push notifications. So let me explain you what I'm talking about. So websites from now on, if we're using Safari, can in fact send you push notifications just like you get on your apps. This is so, so cool, guys. So for example, I'm gonna open up this website right here, The Verge, which I really like. And once this website actually updates to, the, to this new feature, it'll be able to send me notifications. All I have to do is actually go ahead and tap here on the share button and then scroll down and then tap here on add to home screen. And then of course, it's gonna have a name and everything like that. This is not new, this has already happened before, okay? And as you tap on add, as you can see from here, we have the web page as an application and this can actually send me notifications. Of course, it'll ask if I want to receive notifications from that web page, from that website, and if I say yes, and if the website is compatible, it'll start sending me notifications. So how cool is that push notification for web pages? This is really, really nice. And this will actually work as a normal application when we're talking about notifications. So they will appear on my uh, notification center. Uh, of course, if I have some uh, focus mode enabled and it's not do not disturb, so to not receive notifications, I won't get notifications from the app. If I have a daily sum it'll appear there so it'll work as normal normal notifications even though it's a web page right and even you will get badges so as you can see those badges right here so you get those badges for notifications on web pages as well when you have the feature enabled so really nice really looking forward for websites to update to this new feature now I really love this one Remember when Apple made this new feature for FaceTime where you could just pull down the control center and then you could see your mic mode? So then as you tap here in mic mode, you can choose between standard, which is your normal mic, voice isolation, which will pick up your voice and reduce the background sound and background noise. And of course, white spectrum, which is very nice, which it picks up your voice and the environment. So when you're doing like a conference or something like that with many people, this is really nice. So the, the new thing right here is that on iOS 16.4, you will have this mode for your normal phone calls. So your normal phone calls right here from your carrier, you have this possibility. So when you are on a call, this option right here will work as well. So this option will work not only for FaceTime, but also for your normal calls. I've tested this option. I am pretty sure you have tested on FaceTime as well. This is really nice and I do recommend that you use it. Another thing that's really, really nice is right here on our settings. So then if we scroll down and tap on general and then software update, we'll have right here our option for automatic updates. We used to have that before and it'll show the version we're running right now, 16.4. But now we have this new option, beta updates. So as you tap there, you can see that you have a few options. So if your iPhone is enrolled in beta programs from Apple, it'll show right here, Apple ID, and that beta program. So for example, my Apple ID is enrolled for iOS public beta, 
and iOS developer beta. I got both right here. So as you can see, from now on, you don't need profiles anymore. You don't need to download profiles or anything like that. The iPhone will pick up from your Apple ID and show you your programs that you have enrolled. This is so nice. And it gets much better than that because let's say, for example, that this iPhone of mine is running a beta software, but let's say I don't want it anymore. All I have to do is tap on off. So then I'll stop receiving beta software updates and I'll just receive from now on normal software updates and then I'm done. I don't need to delete profiles. I don't need to do anything. I just need to choose if I want to be a beta tester. So uh, be uh, public beta or developer beta or off and then I'll be back to normal as everybody else. I just love this option right here. So easy to customize and so easy to choose. Let's move on and as you can see, I'm pretty excited for this video because all those features are so, so nice. Let's talk about the next one, which is on books. So as you can see, I'm reading a book right here, let it load. And in iOS 16, Apple just removed completely the possibility, the animation for uh, swiping through pages. So as you can see, from iOS 16 on, this is how you go through pages and everybody just hated that. But in 16.4, they fixed it. So if you tap on the page, and then you tap on the options right here, and then you tap on themes and settings, and then you tap here on this button, as you can see, you can choose curl. And then as you tap here to go away, it goes back to that awesome animation that we have all loved for years and years and years since the iPad. It's back, and now you can read your pages as if you're reading a normal book. Really glad it's back. Moving on, if we open up the music app for our Apple Music, we now have this new icon, which is our profile right here in the library, which is our main page. So then you can tap there. And of course, you can easily uh, change some settings, customize stuff, manage your subscription, and then see your profile and everything like that. Much, much easier. Uh, it's always visible there. Now let's go back to our settings. And as we scroll and tap on general, and then about, we have here now coverage. So let's tap on coverage and this is a much better way to actually manage the coverage or warranty status of all of our devices. So as you can see here, we have this device, which is a 13 Pro Max, uh, and we have paired devices as well. So my AirPods Max and of course my AirPods Pro. And as you can see here, all of the devices connected to this iPhone will show up as well. So you can easily see the warranty for those devices as well. You don't see my Apple Watch Ultra here because this Apple Watch is linked to this iPhone, my iPhone 14 Pro. But if it were here, it would appear right there. And of course, you have all your warranty information, uh, hardware service, chat and phone and all that, uh, the limited warranty when it expires. And if you have Apple Care Plus, it'll show up right here as well. So really good way to manage the coverage of all your Apple devices. Now let's talk about the shortcuts app. And I know a lot of you guys use shortcuts and love the automations. I myself don't use it that often, but I use it sometimes. And the stuff that's new right here is the fact that you can now control the always on display. Okay, so I'm talking about the iPhones 14 Pro and Pro Max with automation. So you can set, for example, for when you're about to go to sleep, you have an automation and it does a bunch of stuff, including turn off the always on display, for example. So now that is accessible here in the shortcuts app. And the same with Siri announcements, they are available here in the shortcuts app as well for automations. Now let's talk about the tips app, which a lot of people don't really know it exists. Sometimes it just end up deleting them without even looking at them. And it's a really cool app. You see, you have, of course, a lot of tips on how to get started, discover more. But if you scroll all the way down, you have your user guides. And before, you would just access your iPhone user guide. But now in 16.4, it'll also show you user guides for devices connected to your iPhone. So as you saw, I have AirPods. So you see here, AirPods. If I had my Apple Watch here, it'll show Apple Watch as well. So then you can easily see user guides for not just your iPhone, but also devices connected to it. Now let's talk about focus modes. And I'm a huge lover of this feature. I just use it all the time. Uh, do not disturb, work, sleep, 
I use it all the time, really. And the new stuff here is actually now, as you tap on settings and customization for your focus mode, now you can actually play with your always on display as well on your iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. So pretty much the same as I was talking in the shortcuts, now it's available for focus as well. So let's say you use the always on display, right? So as you tap on the side button, it actually, it, it doesn't turn off, right? It's always on the display right here. So now with this new feature, you can actually control that. So for example, you can set for when I use the sleep focus, the always on display turns off. And this is so nice because it turns off so then it doesn't distract you with light on a dark room uh, it's not gonna use your battery so then you can use and control your always on display on your 14 Pro and Pro Max right here with your focus modes now let's talk about the satellite emergency SOS a feature that is exclusive to the iPhone 14 series and to the US and Canada uh, and now there's a little incrementation, there is more detailing on when you actually need to use the feature that you actually activate and you're actually trying to find a satellite, right? It's gonna tell you with more detail uh, how many hours or minutes the next satellite will pass you by. So then you can easily see exactly when you need to point your iPhone to get the connection to make the call. So uh, it's just, more information and it's easier to use now. Now, remember when I was talking about the Safari web push notifications? Yeah, so we got that and as I mentioned, this is exclusive to Safari, okay? You will only be able to get those web notifications with Safari, but now with other browsers like for example, Google Chrome or Firefox or whatever, you'll be able to create those little web apps. Just like this one I've created, you can create with other browsers so you can create this little app uh, using Chrome, using Firefox, but of course, you won't get the notifications. This is just for the web app. So if you're using an iPhone, I just do recommend that you use Safari. Now let's talk about Home. And it appears to me that every single time that I talk about the Home app in this channel is to talk about bug fixes, resolutions, and things that got better because they had problems and it's the same thing again. So there's a new architecture here in the Home app and after you update to iOS 16.4, you should actually go ahead and tap here on the three dots and then Home Settings and then Software Update and then, as you can see, Home Upgrade Available. Learn more and as you can see, there's an upgrade for my home. So this is a new thing. So you have this new architecture, this new upgrade that you must do after you update to iOS 16.4 so you can continue and upgrade and that's it. So in theory, it'll make the home app better and work better and yeah, let's see if it works. And last but not least, on the new features, of course, you have a bunch more stuff to cover, okay? But the last new feature is actually here in the podcast app and I just don't really use the podcast app at all, pretty much. I've downloaded those two, I don't even know why. But now in 16.4, you have the possibility to access your channels from the library and the up next got more complete as well. You can do more stuff. You just got more options overall. It's a teeny tiny upgrade, but if you use the podcast app, you will like it. And if you use the podcast app with Apple CarPlay, you'll be able to resume from where you left off in CarPlay. So this is cool as well. Now let's talk about bug fixes and we actually have three. The first fix is actually related to when you have an iPhone and you have a kid. You have uh, another iPhone set for a child and then that other phone, uh, the child will ask you to buy something, right? And then sometimes the notification just wasn't popping up here on the parent's phone. So now that's fixed. On top of that, we have matter compatibility for the home app. So we had some problem with thermostats using the matter pattern and then it just just not working with the home app and now in theory it is. So as I said, there are always bug fixes for the home app. And, I, and last but not least, also something that I've mentioned many, many, many times, which is crash detection, a feature exclusive to the iPhone 14 series. And then um, again, it's just more optimization because it's just not working as it should. So sometimes it's triggered by riding a roller coaster or skiing or something like that. So we have more optimization and in theory, the crash detection feature is fixed now, but I bet they're gonna work on it in the future more and more. And to finish up the video, let's talk about performance and battery. 
And talking about performance, there's something I gotta tell you. At this point, I have to say iOS 16 is really solid. It's really fast, it's snappy, uh, you don't have problems, you pretty much don't have bugs, I mean general big bugs. iOS 16 is just great. Um, if you're having problems with iOS 16, uh, like your iPhone is super slow or something like that after updating, that's probably because your iPhone is a little bit older and your battery is a little bit degraded. So it's more something about your device than to the software because iOS 16 is really solid on performance and it continues like that in iOS 16.4. And let's talk about battery because this really surprised me. So if you watched and if you can actually come back to the beginning of the video, you can see that I had around 95 or maybe 94% of battery when I started it. And I've been recording for over 30 minutes, heavy recording, heavy usage, opening all the time. I have a very lit environment. It's hot here um, because of all the lights. And of course, brightness is very high because of the camera. And as you can see, I just lost like two or three percent of battery. So I have to tell you that this impressed me. Battery life in iOS 16.4 overall on many devices that I have tested is great. Uh, of course, don't expect a revolution, but I'm getting at least 40 minutes more of screen on time on a charge compared to 16.3.1. So very, very nice. And I have to tell you, it really surprised me. So to wrap it up, if you ask me if you should upgrade to iOS 16.4, I think it's pretty obvious at this point, right? Yes, please go ahead and update. This is actually a great software update, bunch of new features, bug fixes, battery is great, performance as well. So if you are on iOS 16, update right now, you won't regret it, all right? So that's it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video of Denabal Tech. See you later, guys.